Hey guys, I am Amit Kumar and in this video we are going to talk about bulk DML operation. Topics that we will cover up in this video are What is bulk DML operation? What is the need of doing bulk DML operation? How to do bulk DML operation? And point of caution while doing bulk DML operation. So without wasting any time further, let's proceed with the video. We can perform DML operation either on a single record or multiple records. And when we are performing DML operation on multiple records, it's nothing but bulk DML operation. We use a collection for performing bulk DML, DML limit of 150 statements per Apex transaction. So there is a governor limit by Salesforce, like in one Apex transaction, you can perform only 150 DML statements. Applying bulk DML operation is recommended because it helps to avoid hitting this governor limit. Performing a DML operation on a list of S objects count as one DML statement. Here you can clearly see we are performing a SQL query and fetching all the list of accounts. And then we created a new list of account over here. We are iterating over the original list that we have queried. And we are checking out if the department of that account is sales. We are adding in the description as sales department. This record which we have updated, we are storing in the new account list. And once the loop is over, we are checking whether the new list size is greater than zero. If it is, then we will update this new list. So you can clearly see we have performed the DML statement of update on the bulk of records because we are performing this on a list. Another DML related governor limit is the total number of rows that can be processed by DML operations. It is that the DML processing can only be done on 10,000 records in a single transaction. Now to overcome this governor limit, we use a different concept known as asynchronous apex, which we are going to cover up in a different playlist and a course. So it's pretty much of talk and now it's time to see the things practically. And guys, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you want to stay updated with proper Salesforce tutorials and want to watch more tutorials, make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon. Also, if you have thoughts or question, drop it in the comments. I would love to hear from you and promise I will read every single one. Thank you so much guys. And now you can proceed with the video. Hey guys, welcome to the practical session of bulk DML operation. So till now we have performed plenty of DML operations with different types of state, but all the DML operations that we have performed till now were done on single record, except for one of the undelete operation, which we have done on two records. But now we will see how to perform DML operations on bulk of records. And also we will discuss what is the need of performing DML operation on the bulk of records? So for that, I'm showing you a simple example where I'm going to update all the opportunities in my org. Now to fetch all the opportunities, what we will do is we will create a list of opportunity and we will perform a so-called query over here. And now we are going to change the stage name of all the opportunities. So for that, what we will do is we will iterate over these opportunities and then we will change the stage name. Let's change it to qualification and then let's update the opportunity. Now here what we are doing is we are changing the stage name to qualification. So what will happen? All the opportunities will change to qualification stage. Let's do one thing. Let's make sure that if the opportunity is not closed won or closed loss, then only we change it to qualification, right? As you can see, there are some opportunities which are closed won, some of them which are closed lost. So those opportunities we will not change. So here let's add a where clause. So here we mentioned where stage name is not equals to close one and stage name is not equals to close loss. If I'm executing this query, here you can see it's going to return me 14 opportunities, right? So we will update these 14 opportunities only. Now let me execute this. Now if I will execute the previous query again, definitely I will see those 14 opportunities and all of their stage name will change to qualification. But I want to show you something else. So in this log, if you will scroll down, here you will see some limits. Here it will tell you the governor limits. Now Salesforce provides us some governor limits to work on. And in case if we are crossing this limit, then definitely we will get some exception. So here if you see the number of DML statement, it is showing that we have performed 14 out of 150 DML statement. Now 150 is the limit of 
DML statements that we can perform in a single transaction and out of this 150 we have already done 40. Why it is happening because if we see our code we are executing this update statement inside the loop. So it is updating one record at a time and that's why this update have been executed 14 times. Now because the limit of number of DML is 150 only it is very easy to hit that limit. So bulk DML operation is actually performed so that we can perform DML operation on bulk of records. So instead of executing single record at a time inside a loop, what we will do is we will execute the DML operation on the whole list itself. So what we will do here is we will not update here. Instead of that, we will update the whole ops list or opportunity list. Now let me show you the org first and let me refresh this. So here you can see other than closed one and closed lost rest all the stage names are qualification. Now I'm going to change it from qualification to prospecting. So here I'm going to change it to prospecting and this time I will execute again. Now definitely it executed successfully but before that let me show you how many DML statement have been executed this time. So if you'll see here this time only one out of 150 DML statement have been executed. And this is the reason why we perform bulk DML operation. I hope that is quite clear to you, right? There is one more benefit of using bulk DML operation. Sometimes when you want to insert and update at the same time, then also you can take help of bulk DML operation. So let me show you that first. So let's create an account record. Let's give it a name as proper Salesforce tutorials. Let's name it as ACC1. And let's create one ACC2 where I will fetch a record using SOAP code. So in the org, you know, there is a parent account one account. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the type of this account to prospect. So let's fetch parent account one and let's change the type to prospect. And let's keep both of them inside an account list. So here I'm going to add ACC1 and ACC2. And now I will just use upsert with this accounts. Now by using the bulk DML operation over here, it's going to insert ACC1 because this one is not having any key field, but it's going to update ACC2 because ACC2 is having a key field. So let me click on execute and let's go to the org. Now here I will refresh. So you can clearly see one proper Salesforce tutorials account has been created and parent account one have been updated. So this is another benefit of using bulk DML operation with absurd. One more benefit of using bulk DML operation is with the help of list of generic S object. Now let's suppose if I create an account as Amit Academy and a contact with first name as Amit and last name as Kumar. And this time I'm creating a list of S object. Now because it's a generic list, then what does it mean? I can store any kind of S object over here, any kind of Salesforce object inside this list. So here I created the list and now I'm adding ACC and CON both inside this list. And now I'm using insert and passing this OBJ list. So this time with the help of list of generic S object, I would be able to insert one account and contact together. So another benefit of using bulk DML operation with a generic list. So let me click on execute and let me go to my org. And here if I will refresh, you can see Amit Academy account have been created. And if I go to contacts, you can see Amit Kumar contact is also created. So these are the various advantages of using a bulk DML operation. Also, I told you that there is one more governor limit with the bulk DML operation. Now, let me show you that limit as well. And here you can see the number of DML rows. So there is one more limit that in one single transaction, you can perform DML operation on maximum 10,000 rows. That means in a single transaction, you can perform DML operation only on 10,000 records. But what if we want to perform more, like what we want to perform DML operation on more than 10,000 records, then in that case, we have to go beyond a single transaction. And for that, there is a concept of asynchronous apex, which we will discuss in a different course or playlist itself. That marks the end of this video. See you soon in the next video. Till then, thank you and take care.